Hi, this video is a quick tutorial on how to use Cordis. We're going to use version 11.1 .1, and we're going to use Service Pack 2, which I believe is the current latest version. Uh, we'll go down to the Cordis 2 folder and Cordis 2 11.1 Service Pack 2 Web Edition. This should be a little blue ball icon here. I don't know why I don't have it, but that's what you want to pick. When you use this, I always recommend, and what we do in the lab is always use a project. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Once the screen comes up, you'll see right here, uh, create a new project. So you would select that. If that doesn't come up, uh, you can go under the file menu and select new project wizard. That's the way I'm going to recommend that you use Cordis basically every time. Now once you select that, this screen will come up. Uh, that's the introduction screen. Uh, what you're going to do here is create a directory. So if you're doing Lab 1, just call it Lab 1. It's very important to note that in Quartus you may not use spaces in actually anything. You can't use it in your file names, you can't use it in your pin names. Uh, just don't use any spaces. Just make it nice and simple. What I'm going to do is type Lab 1 and you'll notice that Lab 1 automatically gets added here. Now we're going to hit Next. You're going to get a message uh, telling you that that directory doesn't exist. Uh, of course it doesn't. We've just specified it. So we're going to hit yes. Then you're going to go to page two. We're not going to do anything on page two. Uh, now, page three, this is very important. Uh, you have to tell Quartus which version uh, and which chipset you're using on your board. Now, the ones we're using in the lab is Cyclone 2. And the chip we're using is, uh, where are you? right here EP2C20F484C7 so this one right here now this information is written on top of your chip so if you take your DE1 board and look at the chip the main chip it will say Cyclone 2 on it and this number will be somewhere right underneath it and that's what you want to select if you don't get these two things right or you forget when you're building your project uh, you're gonna have issues when you assign pins you're gonna have issues when you compile and you're gonna have issues when you program so please make sure this information is correct uh, page four we don't do anything with and then the last page you just hit finish now you should double check up here in the left that it says cyclone 2 and has the correct chip number the next thing we're going to do is open a block diagram file. There's two ways to do this. One, you can hit this new icon here in the top left, or you can go under the file menu and hit new. And then what we want here is a block diagram file. It will have the extension BDF, and that stands for, of course, block diagram file. This is the file that you're going to draw your circuit on. Now, You'll notice the name up here, Block 1. I really don't want you to keep these names. Um, you want to give it basically the same name as your project or something that's going to make sense. So as soon as you do anything in here, you can just go to Save As. It will actually suggest the same name basically that you entered on the intro screen, so please go with that and just hit Save. And you'll notice right up here that it changes from Block 1 to lab1.bdf. Now the easiest way to start entering components is to just double click anywhere on the screen. So I'm going to double click and you'll get this window come up. Now again there's several different ways to enter the components. You can actually go through here and look at all of the components you want. If you know what you want the easiest way is to just drop down here and type it in. So for example, for this example, we're going to use a NAND gate, and we're just going to type NAND, and then right after NAND we type 2, and that tells us how many inputs the gate has. If we wanted a 4 input NAND, you just type NAND 4. It's fairly straightforward. Once that's done, you just hit OK, and then the gate will follow around your mouse pointer, and you just click with the left mouse button to drop it on and there's your first component. When you want to add more things you go through the same procedure. Double click. You'll see this window come up again and here I'm just going to type right in this window input and we'll just drop that there. I'll double click again and type output. 
and that will give us an output. You'll need inputs and outputs to interface it basically to your board. Now there's a couple of ways to draw wires. One of the ways is you can just take the mouse and as soon as you get to the edge of the component you'll notice the cursor will change and you can draw wires and now those two things are connected. Another way that you can do it is just take the component, just touch them together, don't overlap them, then let go and then just pull it away again and a wire will automatically be drawn there and that's what I'm going to do here as well. There you go, you've just drawn your first two wires. Now I'm going to make a connection here, I'm going to start drawing by holding the left mouse button and come up here and you'll see it'll make a little square and when I let go you'll see that there's a dot here now. That means that those two wires are connected together. The other thing that I'm going to want you to make sure that you do is not use the default pin names. Please uh, select pin names that make sense. So there's two ways that you can get at these. One is to double click right where the name is. It will turn blue and then all you basically just type. So I'm just going to type a capital A because I want that to be A and then I'm just going to click outside of that input and the name will be changed. The other way to do it is you can just click on the output itself and then you'll get a screen and then you can just change the name right here which I'm going to change to a lowercase y. Usually in Quartus there's several ways to do whatever you want to do. Now to get this onto your board so that you can actually manipulate the inputs and outputs you're going to have to assign pins and those pins are going to represent the switches uh, and the LEDs that are on your board and so on. Now there's two ways you can do it. One you can go up to the pin planner which is right here but if you do it this way you're going to have to enter the nodes manually an easier way to do it although it involves another step is to just compile your circuit at this point. I'm just going to save it first and then compile is the little play button that's right here. Start compilation so we're going to click that and over here on the left hand side you can see all the stuff happening and there'll be messages going in the bottom. You're going to get a few warnings um, many of those are normal so you can just ignore them for now even though there's 13 of them and I'm going to close the compilation report window and then we'll be back to our diagram. Now the reason I wanted to do the compile is now when I bring up the pin planner the nodes will already be in the pin planner and it becomes a little easier. Now how you assign the pin is through the location. Now what you can do is you can just start typing uh, the, the last part of the pin name so just the, the, the letter and the number so for example for the input I'm just going to start typing L22 and it will fill in the rest automatically. So I just hit return and you'll notice over here on the on the left that it added the pin right on our circuit diagram. So now I'm going to go here and for the LED I'm going to choose R20. So I just type R20, it puts in the rest and I hit return. Now when you're done with your pin assignment you don't have to save, they're saved automatically so you can just close the window and you'll see that the pin assignments are now on the diagram. Now you're going to have to compile again so I'm going to do that right now. Just hit the little play button. Almost everything that you're going to do in Quartus has a little shortcut for you. For example this is the new block diagram file, uh, compile, program, they're all going to be up there. I'm going to close my compilation report window again and now I'm ready to program. So to program the circuit into your board, you're going to go on the little programmer icon. You can also find that under tools, programmer, right here. But again, everything you need, there's usually a little shortcut, so I'm just going to click the button here. Now my hardware, the USB blaster, is already set up. If you're doing this for the first time or if you're in a lab where they have deep freeze on the computers, uh, this may say no hardware. If it does, you're going to have to hit Hardware Setup. Now the driver should be installed, so this will show you that the USB blaster is available, but you have to go into the drop-down menu and change it from No Hardware to USB Blaster. Of course, if it's already USB Blaster, you can just leave it alone. If the driver's not there, 
you may have to install it manually. So once your hardware is set up, just hit close. And then here's the file that you want to program. I'm just going to stretch this out a little so you can see the progress window a little better. And then I'm going to hit start. And you can see the result here, 100% successful. And now that circuit should be programmed into your board. And you can check it out by operating the switches, uh, L22 and R20, the pins I've assigned in this particular example, uh, correspond to switch 0 and uh, the red LED 0. So if you turn, uh, move the switch up and down, uh, then the red light should go on or off depending on how the switch is set. I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know.